Thomas Gell is joining us now from Dali, China. He's the president of Amble Luck International Capital Corporation. He was an environmental advisor to U.S. President Bill Clinton. Tom, uh, give me an idea. What's the weather like where you are? How are you faring? And uh, what do you make of this heat wave that just seems to be smothering much of China? Actually, I'm doing very well. Here in Dali is beautiful, so I welcome everyone here. It's about 2,000 meters elevation, so the temperature is in the 20s and very comfortable. However, last week I was in Shanghai. I just came back from the U.S., so I was in my week of quarantine. The temperatures there last Wednesday were over 40, and with the humidity, they were over 49 degrees in Shanghai. Not a bad time to be uh, quarantined in a hotel room, I guess, uh, when it's like that outside. But, but, but as long let me, as the AC is working. Yeah, yeah. well, that was going to be my next question, though. That, that's got to be quite a strain on the electrical grid. How, how's that faring? It, it did very well, fortunately. I mean, it was a, it was a little, you know, underperforming, but, uh, but satisfactory. And that is a huge issue because also driving all of this is the climate change, um, you know, dynamics. And as we need more electricity... China's been adding more and more coal generating um, capability, and that um, increases the, the global um, climate change gases. So we, we have this, this circle that we really need to break out of to be able to solve the problem. Well, you already jumped to my next question. Uh, as I pointed out, you were an environmental advisor to Clinton. Uh, there's been this new study out. I'm sure you heard about it, a group of researchers in the U.K., they used available data, climate modeling, to see just how much of the heat wave there in Britain, which is huge, uh, is being driven by climate change. In their conclusions, this heat wave there is at least 10 times more likely because of man-made releases of greenhouse gases. So talk to me about this, because we're not just seeing it in Europe and the UK. We're seeing it here in the United States. We're seeing it in China. Is this a huge wake-up call, do you think? I, I hope it's a wake-up call because everyone who's been involved in the environmental area all the way back from President Clinton's time knew that climate change was, was real and was going to have a profound effect on our, on our world, society, and lifestyle. And now it's come home to roost. So it's unfortunate it's taken something as dramatic as this, that the you know, devastation on these high temperatures for, for deaths, for glacial melt, which creates... Uh, floods and mudslides in many parts of the world, um, including the U.S. and China. I mean, is really, it was foreseeable. It was to some extent preventable, but now we have to take, you know, some fairly immediate action to be able to make sure it doesn't get worse and we can turn it back. Well, to that point, um, we remember Greta Thunberg in Scotland with the blah, blah, blah speech. You know, everybody just keeps talking. Uh, she wants to see action. We're seeing that from a lot of young activists. There's all these targets, goals, but they seem like they're, they're way out there. Oh, it's going to happen in this year or that year. What about accelerating uh, some of these goals? Uh, do you think countries are going to look at this and say, hey, maybe we need to get a little bit more serious about this? I think they really need to. Uh, fortunately, in the United States, we're having private business drive a lot of it um, because the consumer has woken up to the concept that they want the products they buy to be built in a sustainable manner. So every major corporation needs to put out their environmental report every year, needs to show what they're doing to impact the climate change issues in their own greenhouse gas and emissions. And if that has made a substantial change in the U.S. Remember, the U.S. peaked on CO2 emission in 2007 and has been reducing every year by about one and a, one and a half percent. China is still on the rise until approximately 2030 when they predict to be um, at their carbon peak. But between now and then, they're adding substantial 44 new coal generation facility, more than three times the rest of the world, which is something that we can try to do something about. Thomas Gell joining us, uh, and he is cool, one of the few in China right now. Thank you so much Come for your to Dali.